Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is Mark Wilson Smith, and I'm sat here with a very special guest, Mr. Henry Wharton. Henry, thanks for agreeing to be on the show. You're welcome, Mark. Thank you for asking. Okay, so we're actually sat here in Henry's gym in the middle of York, and I have to say, Henry, the place is looking great. It's looking fantastic. Now, I know you put about 12 months renovation work into getting this place up and running, but tell us, how, how are things going now? Things are fantastic. You can appreciate, mm -hmm. obviously, you just said that we, uh, we spent 12 months renovating the place. Because I've seen this great opportunity in the place. It's not only a boxing club. Mm -hmm. we can, when we put the shows on, we're going to put the shows here. Mm -hmm. So the lads who fight for us out of this gym, they're going to be boxing within their own walls. Sure. And you can't get no closer home. Home, home advantage. Home That's advantage, the home advantage. Say, most <laughs> definitely, yeah. We'll have every nook and cranny, but mm -hmm. we'll put every bit of work we have. And now, obviously, the work, the load that we're putting on, the, and the fighters that we've got, mm -hmm. I, I'm not being bullish in form. It's just that every coach out there is, appreciates what I'm saying. We want to be as good as everybody else, mm -hmm. if not better. And that's sure. not taking anything away from everybody else because everybody does the same. But we've got ambition. Mm -hmm. And that ambition will stay long, long in my heart, you know, because that's where we were dedicated fighters at the time. I've got a good team of coaches work is a great help. Mm -hmm. And I can only thank them and, you know, long may it continue. But we've got a future prospects. We want, want them to keep going forward and we want to be there at the side. Definitely. And saying, well, we got you there. Well, <laughs> you, you want to be there from the beginning, build them be there up from the, scratch. Yeah, yeah. And again, we're, we're an amateur boxing club. Mm -hmm. And if and when they do fancy going pro, well, if ever they ask us to, to go pro with them, well... The option's you know, there, you would be there, take yeah, them to the, the next, next stage. to the next level, yeah. yeah. Much mm -hmm. Okay, now before we started the, the interview there, you were telling me you were always very dedicated. You were, you never, never needed any sort of pushing when it comes to doing the training and stuff but tell me then as as you're now training other people what what do you find most challenging about that it's not really challenging in a way of uh, making them making them do the effort because mm -hmm. they'll put the effort in i just find that what's uh, what i've learned of my life what i haven't been taught and been you know never taught to me was a uh, I teach, I see different things. Mm -hmm. I've seen different things. Maybe because I've been here with great fighters in the past. Maybe other coaches have as well. But there's no set manual to boxing. Mm -hmm. There's no rule book where you say, open page 34 and you'll see how to fire a jab. There is none. Mm -hmm. Every individual is different. Mm -hmm. If there's two guys in here who are six foot four, they might be completely different in style. I've got to make the best of them. Sure. And it might not be training them both at the same mm -hmm. standard, but I'll make the best of them. Mm -hmm. So I've got to find a way to make it better for each individual. So you say that's, it, that's maybe the challenge, bringing out the best in every different style. Thank you, have. because I remember relating back, obviously, to sidetracking from, from our sport, but mm -hmm. very, very similar. David Ledbetter. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you need to fill me in on who this yeah. is. Anyway, we're going back a few Sorry. years, are we? <laughs> American golf coach. Okay, yep. Yeah. Renowned for his history, fantastic coach. He trained, well, he used to coach. Uh, Ian Woolsey, mm -hmm. uh, Masters winner, won the Masters, and then on the other hand, he, he coached uh, Nick Faldo. Mm -hmm. So somebody said to him one day, "How is it that you can coach people? Is it the swing for? Do you train them both the same?" Mm -hmm. He said, "One six foot four, who's an almost perfect human being, mm -hmm. perfect swing, perfect plane." He said, "The other ones five foot two. Okay. How can I teach them both the same?" Sure. He said. I've got to make what they've got better. Mm -hmm. And I loved it because I thought, yeah, that sums everything up for me. Mm -hmm. Definitely. That does, that's typical boxing. Mm -hmm. You don't come in and you say, right, you've got to do what we do. Mm -hmm. No, you, you have a look at them and then you start changing from them because they might do already things good in the first place. Well, that's it. You work to their strengths. Is you what work to their strengths, mate. Mm -hmm. And obviously the weaknesses you work harder. Sure. So there you go. That's how, that's how I find it. And, and again, the lads, are, they're having result after result. I'm sure not they're saying that we're the best team in the world, but you know we're out there, sort of thing. Magic, no good stuff. Yeah. Uh, now you retired from boxing back in 1998, but did you always feel that in some capacity you would eventually get back into the sport? Oh, definitely. Uh, my life was growing up without, you know, around boxing. Mm -hmm. I used to watch boxing long before I started boxing, and my dad would always say to me, "I'm one of eleven children." Mm -hmm. 
and we didn't, you can imagine how difficult that was. I can imagine. We had no yeah. shot of sparring <laughs> partners. And, <laughs> you got plenty of, plenty of practice in, yeah. yeah and uh, I don't know why he picked up me, but he, he must have seen something from a young age. And he said that, you know, one day he said, you'll be world champion. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't far short. You weren't far short. It wasn't no. far short. And uh, just, I love every second of it. Mm -hmm. I've, I've grown up with boxing. Like I said, when I retired, I fell out of love with the game. Sure. Because I put that much effort in, like I say, I was I was a go and getter in my life, and I tried. Nobody had to say to me, "Go for a run." Mm -hmm. It was me all running. People had to say, "Stop running." Okay. Your body needs a break. Had to pull you back a little bit. Pull yeah. me back. I mean, that was yeah, one of my downfalls. And um, but when I retired, that was it. Mm -hmm. I just I didn't want it no more. Okay. I just fell out of love with it with a view to never looking at boxing again, and that's the truth. Mm -hmm. Never ever looking at the sport again, because I, I really couldn't look at it anymore. I didn't watch it on TV, mm -hmm. but I was an avid fan. Sure. I loved it, I read everything about it, I watched everything about it. But now, just one day I was sat at home and I started feeling funny again, and I, I'm boxing my game, and it's what I know. It's in the and blood, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's in the blood, it's there. You, you can't keep away from it for so long, it comes back keep, to you. It's, yeah. it's in my bones, <laughs> and I suppose it'll always be that way. Mm -hmm. Perfect. I mean, say, well, looking back at your career, you had a fantastic uh, career looking back there. I mean, you got the, obviously the British title, Commonwealth title, European title, and then it was really in 1994 that you arrived on the, the world stage. Now, you're going into your first world title fight, you know, chance to become champion, and you're in there against Nigel Benn, the Dark Destroyer. So tell me a little bit about your thoughts and maybe your preparation leading up to that title fight? I mean obviously when the title fight were made it was fantastic, mm -hmm. fantastic for me to, to think that, well again I mean, people say what was it like, I say well I deserve to belong, I, I belong there with mm -hmm. him, I didn't think I wasn't in awe of Nigel Ben. Mm -hmm. I said because I belong there with him but you've progressed was, up to yeah, that stage I've progressed yeah. to that level mm -hmm. and for 12 months long what people don't know, he avoided me for 12 months mm -hmm. he, he Paid me standard side money, fifty thousand dollars in okay. Las Vegas, uh -huh. and I wanted to fight him. Mm -hmm. Obviously, he didn't he didn't fancy the fight so much, but that's the way it was because obviously I was a little bit of a danger, coming number one in the world at the time. Mm -hmm. And um, but leading up to the fight, absolutely fantastic. We we prepared in America. Mm -hmm. We stayed in America for three months. Went then to Spain, and everything around it I can relate back to. And at a time. Mm -hmm. I had a time and I'll never forget. Sure. We had, we had training camps set up, we had sparring partners fetched in, and it was all of the above. Mm -hmm. Nobody else done it more than we did. We did it all. Sure. Okay, we just, <laughs> just a phone call coming through there. Okay. Yeah, no worries. These things happen when we're uh, when we're doing the interviews. No problem. Oh, shows you a man in demand. You know the phones phones never stop ringing. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Um, so going back to the, the the Ben fight there. I mean, Nigel's is uh, famed for his his punching power. And would you say he was the the hardest puncher you went in with in your career? I wouldn't say he's the hardest puncher. Whether I prepared properly, that's more to do with it as well. Because I mean, everybody at that level, man. Mm -hmm. They're really into the doom act. Everybody hurts you. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily as in a state of wobble or thing, but you will feel the punch. Sure. And Nigel Ben, I think what it was, I had a tape of him when I was in America. He had 26 fights, 26 KOs. Mm -hmm. I couldn't find a losing one. <laughs> so 26 fights, 26 KOs. I realised from early on in my life, and I was a fan of his, sure. that anything he hits, he can knock over. Mm -hmm. And I played it pretty smart, thinking that if I go out, hands down and swinging wild, you can't win the fight from mm -hmm. laying on the canvas. Mm -hmm. So I had to play a little bit of caution. Mm -hmm. Just like a runner, you know, you've got your set-off point, stay behind the last four, up until so long. And I, my view was to always come late, mm -hmm. come on strong towards the end. But I just give him too much of a start. I, I think you yeah. four rounds. I think you're saying that in a, a previous interview. Yeah, you just yeah. you're maybe a bit over cautious for the first four rounds. Obviously wary of his power, but then maybe he'd built up too much of a lead by that point. Yeah, and then obviously that that allowed him to box different. Sure. It allowed him to move around mm -hmm. because he didn't fight me the way for everybody else. Mm -hmm. 
I didn't maintain that, if you know what I mean. And uh, it developed my cause. Ideally, a 15 round fight, it just sort of made. Because mm-hmm. I still could have went for a run afterwards. Mm-hmm. I was that fit. But I think Nigel was sort of, he was spent at the end of that fight. He was fight, spent wasn't at the end of the fight, which ideally you should be. Mm-hmm. And it was a bad time. He, he was in hospital because he was, mm-hmm. he was peeing blood, he was passing blood. And, um, but no, fair dues to him, he, he seemed to win the fight fair and square, even though it was close. Mm-hmm. Because I'm just. Writing a book at the moment. Okay, good stuff. A bit of plug for that, yeah. It's a bit bit of extra publicity there, yeah. Yeah, Magic. And um, the man was telling me, the author was writing the book, he said that, take the first four rounds, admittedly I lost. Mm -hmm. Didn't try too hard to win. But playing caution again, probably the right idea, strategy wise. He said, when I've done it all, through everybody's scorecard, all over the world, he wins by a round, the last eight rounds. Okay. You win by one, mm-hmm. by a round, and the other ones level. Okay. He said so. The fight was even with you and Ben. Last eight rounds. There you go. And that just oh. And that makes you think. If only you had gone for it yeah, from the know, start. You I know. think oh, when I won, I think I won by two mm-hmm. on all the judges' scorecards. You know, so it wasn't a white wash as such, but I know I could have done more. Sure. And it'll always live with me that. I could have went earlier. Well, I mean, that's that's what I was going to lead on to. I mean, I know you were desperate to get back in there with him. You were keen on the rematch, and obviously Ben thought better of it. He wasn't having any of it. Yeah. So well, I was going to say, does it still bother you today that you didn't get that rematch? Oh, most definitely. Yeah. Sorry, Mark. Most definitely, because, I mean, I asked him straight away in the press conference. Mm-hmm. I said, I want to fight you again. Mm-hmm. Let's do it again. We need to do it again. Because, like I said, the one thing in my life, Maka, I'll, I'll sidetrack it again, if I'd have beaten Angel then, there'd have been no problem with me fighting the best that America had. Because mm-hmm, sure. I used to shout at managers, say, look, just get me whoever it is. Mm-hmm. I don't mind. Whoever it is, I'll fight. Mm-hmm. Just get me him. So, and I mean, I asked for Ben straight away, and Ben said, no. He said to me, why don't you go for another title? He said, because I'm not going to come near you again. Okay. He said, fight for another title, and it, you obviously you'll win that. He said, Come back to me when we can do a head to head. A unification fight, even bigger, fight. even Thank bigger you. contest. When the yeah. money's worthwhile, we'll do it. And that okay. was one of the that was one of the biggest bursts in history was me and Nigel Ben at the time. Magic. And obviously with us both being champion. Mm-hmm. It'd have been an even bigger <laughs> second fight, even, especially it'd after it'd the way the first massive, one went. Like the first yeah. one, because people have been <clears> curious. Well, Henry's going to go. Yeah. More for it now. He's going to mm-hmm. go from the start, other than lay back. Sure. Because he knows he can take his power, mm-hmm. and you know. One thing I'll say about Ben is he's a great man, great champion, and I absolutely love him. I'm a fan. Yeah, I'm yeah. I think fan. he came down to visit yeah, you here, didn't he? he? Yeah, he's, 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 he's been down at the gym. Having we'll a look, always yeah. have this something between us that what we did. Yeah. We'll always have something that we did, and I always feel like he didn't really see the best of me. Okay, so a little bit of unfinished yeah, business. Yeah, I always yeah. feel that. He hit me with his best shots. Mm. I didn't get you properly, Nigel. I just <laughs> didn't get you. <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't get to land that big left I hook of yours. Get yeah. I just yeah. So mm. I'd Perfect. like just to, not now, of course, yeah, yeah. to all guys, but yeah. Mm. So well, rewind the years, I would like to do it all again. You'd like to go for him again. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, you almost did get into that situation. I mean, Ben said to you, go and get another title, come back and we'll do business. Yeah. And that same year, you did get a shot at uh, Chris Eubank's WBO title. Yeah. Um, but maybe, am, am I right in saying that perhaps uh, Eubank's style maybe caused you a few more problems than Ben's kind of style? Exactly. You open your boxing, mate. Yeah. <laughs> that, Mark. You're absolutely fantastic, public. Um, you read in my mind. Horses for courses, you know, Ben should be the more difficult for me because, you know, one punch can take you out. Sure. But Eubank. <laughs> A counter puncher. His tricky I character, played, I isn't he? played into his hands. They were mm-hmm. real difficult for me. But what I'd done that night, with the intention of, I'll never do what I did against Ben. Mm-hmm. You didn't want to hold back, you mean? I, yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. I, I, it made it made the fight easy for him. Mm-hmm. Even though I think I, that fight played a big part to finishing his career. He's admittedly said that. Mm-hmm. I broke something inside him that night. Maybe I broke something in me, Matt, because I'll tell you, after that fight I tried so hard, mm-hmm. I went and I won the European titles after and I fought the world number ones and so on and so on to reclaim me, my position in number one. Sure. But I was never the same. Mm-hmm. But would, would you say it was that more psychological rather than physical? What would you mean when you weren't the same fighter again? I just want the same. I think I lost mm-hmm. something that night. Mm-hmm. I think because of the punishment I took, mm-hmm. in order, and like I said, I was a go-and-getter. Mm-hmm. 
I tried so hard. Mm -hmm. And he hit me with everything he had. Sure. And I did him. But I tried, I never stopped trying. Because I always believed I could win. And I thought, I'll never leave out again. I'll never do a bend again. I'll never yeah. leave out. I'll never come out of the ring thinking I can go for a run. I was spent as anybody mm -hmm. after that fight. and Because I, I wanted. Mm -hmm. I wanted. And I think I, I, I never left nothing. Sure. I left it all in that ring that night. And so that obviously was then difficult to accept that you gave your all, but yeah. the, the win didn't come. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, like you say, I mean, it's styles make fights. I mean, yeah. Eubank, obviously, defensive, counter puncher. Yeah, it frustrates people. You know what I mean? Oh, definitely. I mean, it, it, it was tough for me. Because mm -hmm. it, it, it looked, I tell you, let's not joke about it. It was absolutely fantastic on the night. And mm -hmm. I don't think there was many super middleweights alive mm -hmm. at that time of his life. That night. Yeah. Because he knew he had to, which was a credit to me. Mm -hmm. Which I can look back on now and say, well, he had to be in a position because... He trained hard, and he trained hard for me. Sure. So that was good. So he must have put me as a... As a compliment for you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he took you as a real threat. Yeah, yeah. even though he threw it back in my face by hitting me so hard. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no. Absolutely tremendous boxer. Absolutely sure. fantastic fighter. Fighting machine, really was. And after all he's joking about and his, his antics, good. Good at what he did. Man. Oh, yeah. Really, I mean... Really good at what he did. And uh, people couldn't understand him. I couldn't understand him. I never really found him. But... Look at the boxing scene side of it. It was really, really class. I know. I mean, like I said, I'm I'm one of Eubank's biggest fans. Yeah. You know, I mean, I was lucky enough to meet him back in Dublin a few years back, and I always felt that if he'd fought less often, because you know he was doing that crazy routine like every six weeks, if he'd fought less often, let the body rest a bit more, I I think he could have achieved more. I think he could have gone for the the big names in America and done very well. But I mean, you know yourself, he was happy enough to fight whoever was in front of him, take the money and. And he was happy with that. He was, after, he was more after money than his legacy. And you just put the words out of my mouth, Mark. Thank you. Because, again, a lot of people out there, they're looking for the legacy mm -hmm. factor. And he was a fighter, was you back that he could have made his own legacy. In America, it's pretty much an unknown. Mm -hmm. You know, even though the verdict is somewhat in the distance there. Yeah, I mean, Ben's better known yeah. than you back Yeah, Ben's Ben, because Ben went over to America and yeah, yeah. took on whoever it was around the blade Barkley. Barkley, yeah. Fire yeah. Doug DeWitt. Mm -hmm. So he took them all on, did Ben? If Eubank could have took less fights and done that, Eubank could have been classed as the best ever. I know, it's. Uh, they were that good. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could have maybe put, you know, in front of him, if we're talking about, I don't know, because the stupid mate, stupid stupid I'm being formed for them forever but he'd have been in your top hand mm -hmm. he'd have been in your top five of all time oh he's great he might be great now, fighter yeah, yeah i tell you a great classic fighter was you man. which then is, is also um not so bad for yourself that no, you took him the distance you yeah. know you give him a hard fight so that obviously reflects well on yourself you know yeah, well, you're in there with I one of the best the, the top 14 anyway so which good is good stuff no no i'm sure a lot of people would agree with that i mean a lot of people have said you're Probably the the best boxer not to win the title, obviously super middleweight, you know, which I which think many nice. many people would yeah. agree with, you know. Yeah. But after after that Eubank fight, um, you got back to winning ways, and you picked up some good good names in your CV. You got like Galvano, Sam Story, uh, Nardiello. So <laughs> he's, he's smiling here, guys. So he's like, <laughs> he's reading. Something. He's not reading. Yeah. So let's say you, you you picked up these big names, and they were all. I mean, let's say Galvano, uh, Nardiello, They both went on to win titles. Sam Story was always in the mix as well. Yeah. So you got yourself back into the number one position, and then in '97 you got another shot at the title. This time against Robin Reed, the the Grim Reaper. Yes. So yeah. how how did that fight then compare to the two big fights of '94? Well, again, I mean. We say we're going back on the terms now, you know, of the Eubank fight. Mm -hmm. I suffered a lot with weight. Mm -hmm. A 12 stone weight division absolutely destroyed me. I've got to tell you it all, Mark, because I think that's appropriate to the, sure. to the listeners, but 12 stone absolutely destroyed me. Mm -hmm. I used to have to look, I used to get to 13 stone, mm -hmm. I'd be absolutely bouncing in the gym. Mm -hmm. I, a stone from that, I was a shell of myself. Mm -hmm. And th thankfully for my time that 24 hours, you get weighed in, then you had at least had 24 hours. Even that was dangerous, because mm -hmm. I was so weak, I was weak as a kitten. And I would punish my body, I punished my body to beat the yield bank, and I punished my body to beat Ben. Mm -hmm. And there was something going, I don't know what it was, but I tried so hard. And I had, I think I defended the European set three times. And 
do the Kumi Quick Chase session. Mm -hmm. And it pushed me because mm -hmm. I had to keep making that weight. Same mm -hmm. as the Eubank scenario. If we'd have laid off a little bit, let the body recoup, sure. and then go back again, I'd have maybe had more in the legs. But the Robin Reed fight, I was really, really confident and happy that I'm mm -hmm. going to fight him. I, never, I was never over, overconfident in any shape or form. But that was my chance to be champion. This was it, that. yeah. This was my chance. Because I think he'd, he'd won the title from Nardiello, yeah, who no. you had beaten, was it? Uh, Sugar Ben Malingi. Oh, yeah, sorry, Mara Galvano. Galvano. No. That was Nardiello. Ben. Nardiello. That was, Nardiello. Yeah. <laughs> Nardiello. Yeah. Nice. Nardiello beat, I think, uh, I think he was the, t the champion at the time. And Robin Reed beat Nardiello, and you had beaten Nardiello previously, so you were yeah. obviously confident going into that encounter. Well, again, I'll, I'll go back a little bit in time. When I beat Nardiello, mm -hmm. Sugar Wayne Malinga has got to fight me anyway. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking, Sugar Wayne Malinga, aging, mm -hmm. aging fighter, this might just be my chance. Come on, I'm due my chance. Sugar Wayne Malinga gives on the strength of me beating Nardiello, mm -hmm. gives him a chance first. So I said, you're joking. You're joking. Yeah. Why should we? Obviously, don't worry about it, don't worry about it. That's my management. I've got to look to them at the time. Obviously not knowing. Well, it's, don't worry. Well, what if Nardiello beats him? You've just beat Nardiello. Well, then you, yeah, so. Obviously that happened, Nardiello yeah, yeah. beat him. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking to myself, well, that's all right. Because mm -hmm. I've just beaten Nardiello. I can beat him again. Mm -hmm. That was even on my worst night ever. I will in the sauna. Mm -hmm. And things happened. Sure. Then he fights again. He fights another defence with Robin Reed. Robin mm -hmm. Reed beats him, so I still thought that was all right. Okay. But the Robin mm -hmm. Reed fight come along, and um, I still fancy myself mm -hmm. to win the fight. But we get in the dressing room. I've got to run these details by, if you don't mind. Matt. Yeah, no, let's go for it. That's, we want yeah, all the details, yeah. obviously. Yeah. I was in the dressing room, and a few things happened on that day, which was a bit spooky, to be fair. What? I don't know. What you don't plan for? You don't plan for them. And they're not good preparation. Mm -hmm. They're not good because everything went well on camera. And I was in the dressing room and it was as big as a shoebox. Mm -hmm. Knowing now, if I take a fighter again to a world title stage, I'll go down the venue before Check and I'll say, first, he ain't yeah. fighting in this. Mm -hmm. No, it's not perfect preparation. The gloves never come until about 30 seconds before we fight. Our music never come on. Yeah. They put some, some of the else music on. So preparation wise, the unsettled. There was a lot of little things at the back of your Thank mind you trying to everything. unsettle. It just you. didn't yeah. work, which you were obviously planned. Mm -hmm. It just didn't work. All by their doing or somebody's doing. They were talking to the stage men. And um, it did upset me. It also unsettled me. And I never really got into it. At the time there was, I think there were four or five rounds gone. And I wasn't even there. Mm -hmm. But I was playing with him. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, the one point in the fight, because the fight wasn't difficult at all, it didn't seem, it, it wasn't hard, Mark, and I hate to, Robin Reed's a pal of mine, I don't want to, if ever I say, I have seen him, mm -hmm. I've said to him in the past, you lost your last fights because you was old, didn't you? Yeah. I said, could you beat them men? He said, well, of course. I said, they couldn't lace your gloves. Mm -hmm. I said, that's how I feel about you. I said, I'm sorry, but that's... <laughs> you told him that to his face yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I go. said, I've got to say it. I've just got to, because it, it's... You've got to get it so out, long. yeah. 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 And, I, and the guy's a lovely guy, and... But I just feel like I wasn't right for the fight. The punches I could see, maybe going back on the Eubank fight, I could see him coming. Mm -hmm. I couldn't get out of the way, Mark. Yeah. I couldn't get out of the way anymore. And that's when you're losing your bit of gifts. If you were just when slowing down a bit at that point. And, and so on and so on. I just think that time had, my boxing life had gone from there. Yeah. I only had two fights after that. I and that was me retired. Was it. So I think, was it the last two fights I think you did at light heavyweight? Was it? Because yeah. that was obviously, the, you, you mentioned before about the struggles with the weight. You had a couple more fights. You won both of those, so you I did, you did go out on a high, yeah. you know. But then, let's like, say, so you, you retired at 29. So that was um, quite quite a young age for boxers. Well, I mean, if you look at if you look at Bernard Hopkins, he's about seventy five. <laughs> you know, <laughs> maybe I think he's older. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean nowadays it's scary because thirty five seems to be young. Mm -hmm. Thirty five does seem to be old. Big champion in the world. I don't know what's ever wrong with the, the world. It just seems to it's going that way. Mm -hmm. Years ago, so much football. You got somebody at twenty nine. Mm -hmm. You're thinking, well, you can't give much for him. Mm -hmm. Now they'll give 30 million for it oh, yeah, it's because they're going on. They last longer, longer, yeah. So whether it's food, diet, and training, I, I don't know. But yeah, 
thankfully the full run of water that time. <laughs> I could retire when I was 29. And so after um, after you've had say a, a couple of years out of the game, so when you're still in your early 30s, the body's had a chance to relax. Were you ever tempted to come back, or did any promoter try and tempt you? And did, was there any offers there, or even yes. just from yourself? There was always offers. Yeah. And I think what it is, the, the read between the lines, and they know what fighters are like. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> they do the. They start wanting to get back in there again, mm-hmm. and they miss all the. They miss all the razzmatazz. They miss the fighting because sure. that's what they are. That's what they become, and the, the, I don't know in a certain way that's that's how they're designed. Mm-hmm. But I never did. No, I yeah, always said, Mark, I always said I was true to myself. Whether I would just that because I wanted to be right, mm-hmm. but I always said the day I retire, because I never ever had a season off. Mm-hmm. I boxed right the way through the novices, the amateurs, the so and so, the pros. I never once had a season off. Mm-hmm. I went right the way through. So the I body just wasn't that, getting yeah, the rest. It was mm-hmm. never getting and the making rest. Making the weight added to making that. Making the yeah. weight was always tough. Mm-hmm. But if I can ever say anything about this sport, and if I were looking at somebody else who had done what I did, I'd say, well, he doesn't owe the sport anything. Mm-hmm. I'm not picking me up, it's just that I'd say, he doesn't owe the sport anything. He'd give it his 110% best. Sure. Mm-hmm. I did, because I always went to do that, man. Mm-hmm. I give me very, very best, and I don't owe it one thing. And it doesn't owe me nothing. Sure, yeah, yeah. But I can actually go out and say, look, I'm, I'm happy with what I did. Mm-hmm. Well, so yeah, I mean, those titles you yeah, picked up, yeah, that's, that's no, said, no easy thing to do. Absolutely fantastic. <laughs> Somebody said the other day, and it was a gentleman who, who spoke on my behalf. He said, um, I was unlucky enough to win the world championship, what if, eh? He said, unlucky, this other gentleman, unlucky. He said, he won British title, he won the Commonwealth, sure. and he won the European. Uh-huh. He said, that's winning something. That is yeah. lucky. That is good. And I said, thank you, mate. Mm-hmm. And that was, that was a really, really big thing for me. Because, I mean, obviously, when, when we achieve it, we take it all too mm-hmm. easy. But it, it takes some doing. Well, now, now that you've retired and you can obviously look back on it, because at the time you're caught up, there's always the next goal, the next big fight, That's the next title. But now, now you've retired, you can look back and think, you know, I, I did do some big things there. You know, That's those fantastic. were great I mean, just, achievements. You know? Just to just to, uh, to get to the world stage. Because mm-hmm. in my life, when when I, you know, I, I was I was in the pre Olympics and all that. I was in the Olympic squad, 80, so they never slept in the middle at the time. That always it bruises me mm-hmm. because. I should have went to the Olympics. Sure. And so things like that is that's equal to not winning the world title for me. Mm-hmm. I know it sounds that because but it's it's both the same really because I mean that that would have been the pinnacle of my my amateur boxing life going and to the Olympics. The world title is your professional and, and boxing life. Yeah. yeah. So so they're both mm-hmm. exactly the same meaning, but obviously different forms. But uh, yeah, look at looking back on it, Mark, I had a fantastic career, fantastic mm-hmm. life doing it, and now all of me. My trials and tribulations, my good times, my bad times. If I can justify all them, I put them in a nutshell. Dedicate my life to coaching others. Mm. Hopefully, I can produce some. Yeah. And if they ever come around again, where they get the opportunity, I won't let mistakes happen like they happen to me. You've got the experience to I've pass got the on. The experience yeah. to pass on, and I'm like I said there. Nobody's got the rights to train good fighters, but hopefully, if I do, I get another chance. I'd just like to say, well, look, I've been there. Mm-hmm. I know how to do this. I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> It'd be absolutely lovely. Imagine. I mean, let's say, looking back, I mean, that was, as I call it, the golden era of the, the super middleweights when you were around, you know, the early and mid 90s. And nowadays, it's, it's gone through a bit of a revival, you know, with the Super Six tournament. You've got Ward, Kessler, Froch around there, George Groves coming, George up. coming up. And I mean, when I, when I spoke to Steve Collins last year, he, he told me he felt that your era, his era, was uh, stronger than it is now. Would you go along with that? Without, without you know, saying that they actually... Yes, I would. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If you ask me directly. More, about, more quality I and would depth. Do, because, I mean, obviously, we can always mention, we can all, we can all relate back to the golden era. The other golden era was Leonard, Duran, Ernst, mm-hmm. Agler. Fantastic. Not putting us in them light, mm-hmm. but why not? We're, we're, the ne- we're certainly the next. Sure. We definitely. certainly are because, I mean, we, we may have had an outstanding one, what I've stood out and could have fitted in that pack any shape, any time at all, but we haven't had them as a group. Yeah, yeah. We haven't had the Ali, Foreman, Fraser, Norton. Then there. I mean, you, you only need four fighters and it can last a decade. 
I said, well, that was your 70s, the 80s, you've yeah, just mentioned, that's the, right. the Four Kings, I think the they're called, kings, yeah. the Four Kings, and then the 90s was your batch. Yeah, I mean, so. it was absolutely fantastic, because me and Ben, we could have boxed each other three, four times. Mm -hmm. You, Bank and Ben only boxed twice, they could have boxed again. Sure. Like that, who knows, who won, who would have won, should have boxed again. Collins, to be fair to him, not took anything away from because he's a good fighter, earned his stripes. Mm -hmm. He come late. Sure. He come late, he got his chance with them with a little bit on the slide, which mm -hmm. I'm sure he'll admit. I got them when they was bouncing. You got them when they're prime. <laughs> yeah. what? What? I can't even win that lottery mark. <laughs> <laughs> so I was going to say then, if, if you were around today uh, in this pack of fighters, how do you think you do? Do you think you'd get that elusive world title? Yeah, I do. You do? Good stuff. Yeah, yeah I certainly do, Matt, because I think we all would. Mm -hmm. Every, everyone who was champion there, I think we could all now, for how times moved on and people are jumping a little bit higher, they're running a little bit faster. Colin, Shubank, Ben, myself, and maybe another, or what have you, we could all win world titles. Mm -hmm. I think they'd dominate just like they did then. Back then, yeah. Absolutely Great fantastic. Stuff. Great stuff. Because again, when it went, I go back to Colin, when he boxed, nobody ever minded Collins winning the world championship. Mm -hmm. Because when he boxed, he boxed the best America had. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, he couldn't short. He got beat on points each time, I'm sure. So he done what I did, really. Mm -hmm. He took on the best, and he just got caught shy. But then his time come, and then he took it with both open arms. That's it, It yeah. was absolutely fantastic for him. It's just, I was waiting for mine. I'm still waiting. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm sure it'll come round, you know, maybe yeah. as a trainer rather yeah. than a boxer this time, yeah, but I'm well, sure it's, so. it's around the let's corner. So. so I've just got one last question for you before we, before we wrap up today. Yeah. Going back to that golden era, I mean, you, you fought the big names, Ben Eubank, but who else would you have liked to have fought at that time? And because you had like James Tony, Roy Jones were going to, would you, would you have fought any, any of them? Was that something you, you would have wanted for your career? Well, that name in your if, CV? If I can enlighten you about how me as a person works, how I did work, and this has not been bullish, Mark, because I'm far from that, but how I did as a person, how I was, say if I'd have beaten Nigel Ben mm -hmm. that night. I don't know, I would have picked my wits against Roy Jones, so and so, so and so, so and so. But I'll tell you what it is, I'd have boxed him. Yeah, yeah. Because I would have said, I swear on my life, I would have said to my manager, get me in. Yeah, you've gone for the big fight. But if I ask anybody in here, people who know me, they'd have said, he'd have took him on. I would have definitely said, that might have resulted in me getting beat. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't but have gone for it. I've mm -hmm. gone for it. And <clears throat> As true as I'm here, I would have said, get me him. Mm -hmm. I know there's a good chance that Roy Jones would have beat me. I would have known that at the time, because mm -hmm. I said, get me him. So and so, James Tony, get me him. Mm -hmm. Michael Nunn, get me him. Yeah. That I would have done. Mm -hmm. That might have resulted in me getting beat, but I could have always gone and come back. You'd have given it a shot, you'd have, have you wouldn't have had that question in the back of your mind, you'd have gone out there, given it your best and Thank settled you. it well, one I way or another. With that. It's like now I can live with it. I don't. Mm -hmm. I don't really think about you know. Just in a turn, night time thinking, could I, should I, would I? No, I, I think I did all right. Did, I'd yeah, give, yeah, I'd you give, certainly did. Give me a chance to give me a chance, and I, I took my chances. Yeah, yeah. But unfortunately, things didn't work my way. But I'll tell you what it is: to fight for the world title is a, as it's always been a dream in my life that I achieved. And aside of that, to win titles. Mm -hmm. was always a great thing for me. Mm -hmm. I held the ta championship between them and I will never beat for the championship that I owned. If only I could have won that world title. That would have been <laughs> it, yeah. Been <laughs> if that form well, that, like I say, that's coming run. for one of the boxers you'll be training. That's the, uh, you'll get it yeah, one day well, with, so. as the, well, the coach. I've got three sons of mine training tonight in the gym. Okay. And, uh, the next generation, they'll be working generation. on that big left hook. Yeah. Guess what? It's the favourite shot. <laughs> the left hook is it? It's the yeah. Left hook. But there you go. But uh, hopefully, like I say, we don't ever pressure them into boxing. It's something they want to they do. They want to do, yeah. And, and they also coach as well, so they're coaching others. Brilliant. So if we can keep feeding, keep feeding. It's not only that, Mark, it's better for the kids because if they've got somewhere to go, mm -hmm. they never have to be a boxer. If they've got football, rugby, golf, cricket, snooker, they've got an outlook. They're mm -hmm. not sat on the PlayStations, there's nothing on the PlayStations, but. 
they're, they're doing something mm -hmm. and they've got somewhere to go mm -hmm. on, on nights no are you going to the park no i'm busy boxing so and so so and so they're getting out they're keeping fit yeah any particular spot i think is fantastic for the future brilliant Okay, so on that, Mr. Henry Wharton, I'd just like to say thank you very much, sir. It's been an absolute pleasure. It's been a pleasure. Your knowledge of boxing is unbelievable. Well, I'm glad we got that on the file. Yeah, we'll get that broadcast, definitely. Brilliant. Thank you very much, sir. Good luck with the gym. I know it's going to go well for you. Thank you, sir.